Hi there and welcome to this lecture about Sweden's history. This lecture will focus on the start of the year 2022. My name is Marcus Henriksen and I'm a history teacher here in Sweden. During this time we can see that the electricity crisis was getting worse, both in Sweden but also in other European countries such as Germany, Great Britain, Poland and so on. This was due to the fact that there was now a lack of natural gas from Russia. But here in Sweden we have also the division of the Swedish electricity market into several or different zones, where we can see a surplus of electricity in the north that is sold to other countries such as Norway, Finland, Denmark, Germany and so on, but a deficit in the southern of Sweden. The power grid system here in Sweden is heavily neglected and it has been so for like 30 years. So it's hard and difficult to transport electricity from northern Sweden to southern Sweden. We have also neglected our railway system, our water pipe system, etc. According to some American estimates, we here in Sweden need 3000 billion Swedish crowns the next couple of years in order to fix these problems. What else has contributed, you might ask? Well, the decommission of nuclear power here in Sweden. And this is particularly important in the southern Sweden, because there we have the nuclear power plants. So oil was needing during this time. Sweden even had to start up the oil power plant in the town called Karlshamn, which uses about 160,000 liters of oil per hour. But the media here in Sweden presented a different picture altogether. They said basically that we didn't have a problem with electricity here in Sweden. It's just extra cold, there is a little wind, blah blah blah. But few people bought these explanations. The politicians here in Sweden, mostly the social democrats, firmly claim that everything here in Sweden was cool. We have a surplus of electricity, there is no crisis. But more and more people now wanted to invest only in northern Sweden, where they had a surplus of electricity, but companies in southern Sweden found it increasingly difficult to even manage to stay afloat. The war in Ukraine also began during this time. On February 2022, Vladimir Putin declared war on Ukraine. The reason behind you might ask, well in December 2021 Russia made several demands on the NATO Security Alliance. Among other things, the, the alliance should not be able to expand to include more and more member states, and especially not those that bore to Russia. They also demanded that no military bases were to be placed in countries that were formerly members of the Soviet Union. But Ukraine didn't listen. But Vladimir Putin didn't speak about these demands a lot in Russian media. Instead, he talked a lot about that Ukraine was full of Nazis uh, that had to be fought. But many people here in Sweden and in Europe and the United States asked what did he talk about? N Nazis in Ukraine is insane? Well, you should know that Russia have its own definition of Nazism, which is basically that Nazism is anti-Russia. And what has Ukraine done d during the last couple of years? Well, they have countered Russian culture moved closer to the West and EU and the United States. They also banned the Russian language in Crimea and so on. But yeah, there can be hidden motives. Um, let's say for a fact that Putin might be crazy. He has sat in isolation for a couple of months in order to avoid the coronavirus. 
He might have gotten some illness or sickness. We know for a fact that he had visited the hospital in Russia 35 times. Some generals or oligarchs may, might have planned to assassinate Putin because he can be seen as weak. Putin could also have a deal with Donald Trump. He could also want to create an economic crisis in the West. Or he might just want access to some natural resources, wheat, neon gas, helium, and so on. You can find a bunch of those in Ukraine. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we can see that the Western countries now imposed increasingly harsh economic sanctions against Russia and their economic interests. So they stopped buying from Russian companies, they froze Russian assets, and so on. Many large companies, including Swedish companies such as Spotify, IKEA, H&M, they chose to leave Russia. We can also see that this war increased the inflation both in Europe and in the United States, but also yeah, in Russia. Russia sells everything from fertilizers, sunflower oil, wheat, rubber tires, to such things as oil and natural gas. So prices rose and so did the inflation. Many countries, including Sweden, now sent a bunch of aid to Ukraine. Everything from clothes and food to medicine and weapons. And more and more refugees were now headed, heading from Ukraine to various European countries, including Sweden. And they talk now about numbers of 10 million refugees and so on. We can also see that Eriksson was now accused for helping or contributing money to ISIS. So they were accused of bribing ISIS in order to continue work and sell in some Arabic countries in the Middle East. The Swedes were now also increasingly afraid of a military war. So they began to prepare for that kind of situation. So they bought storm kitchens, radios, tents, just in case. Europe was now in a difficult situation. Partly because the interest uh, rise higher and higher, inflation rose also more and more, and the Europe countries are some kind of energy dependent on Russia, because some European countries such as Poland and Germany, they need a bunch of Russian natural gas in order to function. And our transition here in Europe to renewable energy sources such as wind power has proven problematic. Because you need nuclear power or gas or oil or water power in order for the electricity system to be in balance. So if the European countries now stop to import Russian gas, they know that prices would rise even more and we already had a high inflation. The most happy people in the world were Finland. Sweden, well, we are still considered to be among the most happy people in the world alongside Finland, Denmark, Iceland and so on. But according to some American studies, Sweden was now the world's second most dangerous country for women. This is however incorrect. This is only if you look at the percentage of reported rapes. Finland now said that it was time for them to enter and join NATO. 
and we can see some changes in Swedish politics. SD, Moderaterna or, and the other right-wing parties here in Sweden now choose to become more immigration friendly and said that we should help Ukraine as much as possible. Nyamko Sabuni left the uh, Liberal Party here in Sweden and she was replaced by this man, Johan Persson. Stefan Ingves then said that he was going to resign as chief and head of the Swedish Central Bank. He was then replaced by Erik Therén, the man in the picture here. During the year 2022, Rasmus Paludan started some riots in several Swedish cities by burning the holy book, the Koran. Muslims were really upset, they burnt cars, they attacked police officers, they burnt buildings, looted buildings, set cars on fire, and so on. Most of the injured during these protests were police officers, around 300. The Social Democrats now began to seriously considering joining NATO and NATO membership. Large NATO exercises were held in the Baltic Sea, including American warships in the Swedish city, uh, Swedish city and capital Stockholm. And then Sweden decided to submit an application together with Finland for NATO membership. But they got no. From who you might ask? Well, Turkey. Turkey had several demands for accepting Sweden. They would now be allowed to buy Swedish weapons, just like the dictatorship of Saudi Arabia. Sweden was also going to help Turkey to hunt down terrorists. We must also share important information with Turkey regarding military issues, espionage and so on. And we must also work to get Turkey into the European Union. They are not allowed today because they have imprisoned thousands of teachers, lawyers and journalists with wrong opinions. They also are known for using torture, control of the media, used a lot of propaganda and disinformation. They also stopped the Pride Parade, etc. And they recently tried to start a new war with Syria. In the year 2022, we can see that the criminal gangs here in Sweden grew rapidly. We also had a record number of shootings. And... Um, the Sweden Democrats therefore made a so-called motion of non-confidence uh, against Morgan Johansson. But Magdalena Andersson, the Prime Minister of Sweden, said that if he was to resign, I would also resign. So it didn't happen. And then the Christian Democrats here in Sweden opened for an uh, Ad, admin, uh, amendment uh, to the abortion law to make it constitutionally protected. What else? Well, the Christian Democrats also wanted to see 25 years in prison for rape, uh, lifetime for rape against children, and if people wanted to be paroled, they want, uh, they need in order for that to happen, to do a so-called medical castration. The Social Democrats, on the other hand, wanted now to ban winnings and profits in the Swedish school system. So I hope that you, during this short lecture, have learned something new about Sweden's history. The sources I've used for this video and lecture are the following. All national news on uh, SVT during this, uh, that year, that is 2022, the economic effects of Russia's invasion of Ukraine YouTube video, uh, 
Ekonomibyrån, uh, The Bureau of Economics, that is a Swedish television show. Uh, about stuff like Putin, corporations, Putin prices, the future, the Russian collapse, and so on. And some YouTube videos. So, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I hope that you have a great day. Bye!